Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. The other day, I was watching a RuneScape 3 YouTuber by the name Protox, as he did a deep dive on what the best combat style is in the game. That was a perfect opportunity to steal, uh, I mean, to take inspiration from him, and asked if I could mimic his video for OSRS, to which he said yes. So, today, we will analyze all three combat styles and give you a more detailed answer that a lot of people probably don't think about when answering this question. If you guys enjoy these uploads, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, drop a like, and of course, join our Discord server with a link in the description below, so you can interact with me and our amazing community that's nearing 2,000 people. So, come join! What I want to talk about today is not only which combat style is best, but analyze other aspects of combat to take more things into account. I will talk about the training methods and how diverse it is to train, how powerful each combat style is at the different stages of your account, special attack weapons, how much money you need for budget or best in slot gear to bring the style to its full potential, and finally how useful they are at bosses to see where you should prioritize your training time and of course your money. So boys and girls, grab your sword, bow and staff, and let's talk about the different combat styles in old school RuneScape. In the background you will see me and the boys at the TOB, as I am working towards the 25kc for the elite combat achievements. If you make fun of me in the comments, a swift ban will come your way, you absolute rats. Alright, let's start from the beginning. How diverse are training methods? I'll always talk about melee, ranged and magic in that order, and it doesn't necessarily mean that one is better than the other, but we will decide after said category. For the sake of this video, I'm going to include defense in the melee category just because it's a little more convenient to train in this one. But remember that defense plays a big role in all three combat styles, of course when it comes to tanking hits, and also levels required for armor in all three combat styles. I would honestly say melee is pretty rough because you have three skills to train. If you're starting from scratch and you don't do any questing right away, the first few levels are going to be incredibly slow. I personally train attack first to be slightly more accurate, strength second to hit harder, and then defense last since it doesn't really affect DPS but so I can wear better armor. Any experienced player knows that it is almost mandatory to do quests such as Waterfall Quest, The Grand Tree, Holy Grail, and so many more that give a few thousand experience, but in terms of levels, it's actually huge. I would also say it is the least diverse to train because realistically speaking you can only get experience when fighting things, but more about that in a second. If you're not training Slayer, or god forbid you're at the Nightmare Zone outside of point boosting, just grab your best weapon and armor and start whacking things until they die. Up until high level bossing, your weapons are not going to make that big of a difference. From early to mid game, your standard scimitar will do just fine. And other attack bonuses are not going to be crucial in combat, so this is pretty bland early on. Some of you might say that ranged is literally the same, only with bows instead. However, with completion of the dwarf cannon quest, you can get yourself a nice, well, dwarf cannon, and you will get passive ranged experience wherever you take it. Nowadays it's not really that expensive to run, and it will always be useful to speed up Slayer and of course for those extra ranged levels. Until you're able to use it, you will be stuck with the short bows which are a bit faster than melee weapons, and slightly more accurate as well. And since there's only one skill to train it, things are going to go a lot quicker. If you want to speed up your training, the third option available is speedrunning the skill with Chinchampas in the Monkey Madness 2 Caves. The nice thing about this method is that you can set the chins in defensive mode, which will grant you passive defense experience as well. As I've covered in previous videos, at not such high levels, even if you're not paying attention, you can get a minimum of 400 to 500k XP per hour, jumping to almost 1 million nearing 99 with a correct setup. So, if you're looking for a quick combat 99, this is totally it. When it comes to weapon variety, we have a lot more than melee, each with its particular use. You can stick to short posts for early game, crossbows for monsters with higher defense, a blowpipe for quick DPS, the bofa, the twisted bow, and much more. These are also going to give you a ton of options to fight whatever monster you are doing. Now, it's not like melee where you have three weapon styles, but the type of weapon which will be efficient against your target, and it will definitely make a bigger difference whenever you are training ranged. Lastly, we have magic, and this is the clear winner when it comes to training variety. If you remember my quick magic guide from almost four years ago, which, now that I think about it, 2023 will definitely see revamped skilling guides for me, this is by far one of the most diverse skills to train in the entire game. Oddly enough though, not really for combat. You see, all of the spells available in the four books have so much utility that you don't really need to train Slayer with magic spells up until you get the Trident, or at least that's what I suggest. In my very personal opinion, training magic through combat spells is such a waste of money, because more often than not you will be spending more money than you make. 
So why not make money through magic as you are getting experience in either an AFK or a fun way? Spells like Alking, Spin Flax, the String Jewelry, Plank Make, the Grime, and so many more that will get you to higher levels for you to be ready to train more conveniently with the trident-like weapons. Now, that's not to say that you can't train magic through combat, because just like Chinchampas, if you go to the Monkey Madness 2 caves with the ancient spellbook, you will grab a disgusting amount of experience. So much so that it's going to fly by and you won't even need the spells I did from 80 to 99 which were String Jewelry and the Plank Make. If you train on the defensive style, you can also get the best defense training method in the game, which will be a huge bonus if you are nearing max mage level and you don't already have 99 defense. I would say weapon variety is higher than melee, but slightly lower than ranged. I mean, sure, there are tons of combat spells, but not all of them are always viable. And with not as many weapons or type of weapons as before, magic comes to a close second. So, to recap everything I just said, for training variety and diversity, as well as the amount of options offered, magic comes in first, ranged comes in second, and finally we have melee. Now, keep in mind I'm not including special attack weapons here, as it will be its own category. But I'm sure you will most likely know why I'm saying this. So now, on to the next one. Alright, so how powerful is each combat style at different stages of your account? This is honestly not that deep, and with my experience through one main account, a mid-level hardcore Ironman that's still chilling in Lumbridge fishing food for later adventures, and three runs of leagues, I can tell you the following. I feel like during the early game, melee is by far the worst out of all of them. Like I said before, having to train three skills individually, or extremely slow if training on shared, will slow you down so, so much. Ranged is a bit better, but honestly not by that much as it's more accurate even with low-level bows and arrows. The clear winner for the early game is obviously magic. It hits a ton even with low-level spells, and even Fire Strike can dispose of quest to bosses pretty quickly. You need a measly level 7 for it, and you won't need a lot of equipment to put in some big numbers. For the mid-game, it starts to get a lot better with melee. If you have base 60s or 70s, you will hit quite big even without the best weapons and armor you can wear. Range stays second place only because magic takes a massive hit for the simple fact that after bolt spells, it starts to get quite expensive and not really worth using in combat. So for this one, melee first, range second, and then comes in magic with the bronze. Once you are a late or endgame machine, I feel like melee and magic have the same power. When it comes to high level PVM and bossing, melee will see a lot more use of course, but in terms of power, I honestly feel like they are fairly balanced if you don't take the Tumikin Shadow into account. Ranged comes in at number 1 because with weapons like the Bofa or a Tebow paired with Masori, your DPS will increase dramatically and it's going to make you an unstoppable machine. So our final table looks like this. First place worth 3 points, second place worth 2, and finally third place with 1 point. The clear winner is ranged because it stayed balanced during the early and the mid game, and it excels during the late game. Melee and Magic being almost tied, but if I had to pick a better one, Melee would take second place because of how common it is to use at so many bosses, and even at places where multiple styles are needed. If you disagree with this, please let me know why in the comments below. Up next we have a pretty short category because you will quickly be able to tell what a clear winner is. But I thought, hey, why not include it here? Special attack weapons are key when it comes to bossing and the PVMing, and if you are going to the special attack page on the wiki, the amount of melee weapons with special attacks is honestly quite staggering. We have crucial special attacks such as the Dragon Warhammer, Bandos Godsword, Seradon and Godsword, Dragon Claws, DDS, Ancient Maze, Bone Dagger, and the list goes on. We also can't forget about some of the newest additions to the game in the form of the Osmond awesome Pimsfang and the Yellow and the Red Karis, both of which are absolutely busted inside the Tombs of Amaskun, so not to spoil too much, <laughs> this is our clear winner. The not so close second is ranged. Typical special attack weapons include the Blowpipe, Zarek Crossbow, Dragon Throwing Weapons, and even more niche ones like the Dark Bow and the Dragon Crossbow. I would say only the first two are more commonly used, but this style offers a good variety of fun special attacks to use. That means that Magic is our clear loser in this round. For weapons you would typically use, we have the Volatile and the Eldritch Staves, and maybe the Staff of the Dead. You can't forget about the Dawnbringer and T.O.B., but honestly, it wouldn't even bring it near the amount of variety we have for the other two. So, sadly, a big L for magic. Alright, now for the fun part. How much money do you need to bring a combat style to its full potential and to cover all of your bases? I will obviously mention current prices, but I'm sure they won't change that much in the future, unless we have another Great Depression like the time Tebow hit 750 mil, only a few months after I bought it for 1.1 bill. But, copium aside, let's start with melee. 
Also, this doesn't include special attack weapons. For the best in slot melee gear that has you covered for all styles, including a tank roll at some activities, we have Torva, Osmum Tems Fang, Averting Defender, Amulet of Torture, Primordial Boots, Ferocious Gloves, Berserker Ring, Inquisitor Set with the Inquisitor's Mace, a Scythe, a Blade of Seldor, and just this year armor. All of these nifty toys will run you a humble 2.3 billion GP, and with special attack weapons, it's going to be much, much higher than that. For ranged, we have Masori, which is still fluctuating quite a bit. A Twisted Bow, Necklace of Anguish, Pigation Boots, Zerite Van Braces, Archer's Ring, and a Toxic Blowpipe. Still pretty expensive, but this will run you a little more than 1.9 bill. And like we said before, not a lot of ranged special attack weapons are needed, so if you add those to the gear, budget won't increase as bad as before. Now keep in mind that this is not including Bofa and Full Crystal, because people with Twisted Bows typically don't use it. But you can also let me know what you think in the comments. With the release of the Tombs of a Mascot, Magic sees significant changes starting with the Tumican Shadow, which is also still a bit wonky and the best candidate when it comes to price drops in the future. Follow that up with Full Ancestral, an Occult Necklace, Eternal Boots, Tormented Bracelet, Seer's Ring, a Code I Want, and a Fortified Ward of Elitness. All of these items will cost you just a shy of 2 billion GP, and as of the time of making this video, it's slightly higher than ranged, but not for too long. For now though, we can say that the best in slot of ranged is the quote-unquote the cheapest out of all of them, followed by magic, and of course melee coming in last being the most expensive. So, whatever your favorite combat style is, and if you wanted the best weapons and armor, start saving up because you will need a ton of GP. Now we come to another fun part, which is how useful each combat style is at the different activities in the game. I will start by saying that some bosses have different ways to kill them, but I will go for what's typically more convenient. Uh, again, if you disagree with what I have to say here, you can let me know in, in the comments below. I'll guide myself with the bosses as you see them on Runelite High Scores. You will see some icons for each combat style wherever they are mandatory, and at the end we will count how many points each one got. You can pause if you want to see this in greater detail, but to summarize, ranged ended up being the most useful by 2 points with a total of 21 followed by melee with 19, and finally magic with 50. When it comes to casual slayer, I would say both melee and range are also super useful, and the magic isn't exactly the best at many monsters. If you look me up in the high scores, you will notice I have more combined melee experience than I do in range than magic, and even when this is the case, I still think ranged is the best combat style for endgame PvM and bossing, followed by melee and then magic. Now, remember that's not to say that magic is useless, but maybe not as commonly used as the other two. So boys and girls, we come to the end of the video where we counted the total amount of points from each round. Not to drag it for too long, so here is what the final standings look like. With 13 points, ranged is a clear winner, and actually the most balanced out of all three of them. Coming in second, we have melee despite needing a lot more GP to upkeep the damage, and last but not useless, we have magic. As I said many times throughout the video, you can let me know what you think of this ranking system in the description below, and I would love to know how you would personally categorize and rank all three combat styles. Ladies and gentlemen, that means we come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, and of course for making it this far. I want to give a massive thank you to every person who has become a channel member, as your extra support does really go a long way. If you want to join this list of absolute legends, you can go ahead and click the join button below, and see all of the cool perks and rewards you can get for your monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. In the next one, we will have a slightly more controversial topic as I want to ask a crucial question and a debate with you guys. Is Old School RuneScape ready for a new skill? Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, peace.